This is Dean from Decarson CPA and GRL STEM lines. Working on the Decarson CPA HR task force lines today. And just following up on, an, on a process that was going back and forth with HR and vendor communi communications. On the HR and vendor sourcing lines, there's a continual challenge, which was the genesis of us starting the Decarson CPA HR task force lines. And this continual challenge to help meet entity demand with supply side uh, resources and thinking about not just ourselves, a lot of this has to do about the skills we have currently to help and it's kind of a reservoir and a flood wall, if you will, and a way for HR and vendor sourcing to get up the wall and see what's on the other side so that we can help bring through um, the degrees of as needed skills. You know, obviously sometimes you're not going to be using the totality of this, which is all about system design, architecture, programming software, and the interrelating communications line because it's a macro model of the economy and communications within it, nested within it. But focused on these lines here, just getting what they need from the well of water, which is plenty of skills. And along with those lines are the lines of current STEM skill in the economy and financials, domestic STEM and allied STEM, which can get to the lines um, directly from what they're doing, repurposing. Maybe there's some line of the economy where they're mapping out of, and those skills can just come straight over with small adjustment. There's remappable STEM skills, people with related uh, skills. So... Uh, for example, statistics comes to mind. Statistics is a part of the CPA curriculum. Statistics is part of the business curriculum. Statistics is part of the health curriculum. Statistics is part of the CFA exam. Statistics is part of the actuarial line. Statistics is part of engineering. Enough said, there's plenty of lines where those skills exist. Those skills correlate to data science and engineering. And in addition to that, we have lots of people who are pretty intelligent and are you know, and more than that, will apply themselves to learn things. Where there's an opportunity, they will take that bridge. If you give them an opportunity to training or development, they're going to take that line. They just don't have the right type of support because it's so quick to raise a hand and say, let's get the skills from somewhere else before ever exploring the domestic lines of STEM skills, which is a wrong decision because in the long run, it's one that's very defeating to the economy. This is a sustainable line where you get domestic STEM as well as the right cross-pollinization of global STEM, which is important to have that perspective analysis, the skills that our differences bring to us. Um, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're not hurting a domestic workforce by totally overlooking those three classes of um, STEM skills, which come from one point to the next, uh, retrainable STEM skills, and as well as um, easily developable, developable STEM skills. Uh, what happens right here is that HR and vendor sourcing and the connecting lines, and realize, please, that this is just the first recent slide I've done on this, and there's a lot I really want to say, so it's not going to come across as an eloquent message, but it's one to the line, and we'll be working on this and improving this as we always do. <clears throat> In any event, over here, so if an HR and vendor sourcing comes to kind of the reservoir and the well of, of skills, they need a, a, a way to get up there, because the problem that's happening right here is you've got a tech wall of perception, which is the HRS, the ATS, and the vendor portal lines obfuscating, making difficult to look at talent in the water well, right? So HR and vendor sourcing gets an order, an entity demand order from some level of the business. They get sent out there and they send them out on the field, okay, it's maybe it's not that fair to HR and vendor sourcing. They might have other skills, communications, and finding things, but they may give them one very brief thing, go out and find me a business analyst, go to the wall and get me someone that can get that. Um, and on the other side of the wall, there's lots of talents and skills. We are a subset of many skills in the economy, so it's not to say that we're all the skills up here, but all these skills are lines that we've kind of built up our mindset to work around, and many more in detail lines. We're just sharing here the tip of the, the line so you can get the general perspective, and then where we meet on services, we can go down to detail for what needs to happen um, well down below the drill down lines of this. Um, so if HR and vendor sourcing comes to the wall, they're looking for talents, they're pretty much would get stuck at the wall ordinarily. So we built the HR task force lines in manner and effect of a ladder to climb up or, a la or you know, steps to go down to meet them, whatever it needed to be. But you can imagine that on the other side of this wall, metaphorically speaking, are tons of skills, but as a perception wall as well, and where the, the tools that HR and vendor sourcing relies on, the HRIS, the ATS, the vendor portals, cannot help them to see how much water is in the well on the other side. Just on the other side of that wall of a lack of perception, which exists because the ATS, HRS, is flat, non-relational databases that can't read from point to point and thus lacks the skills that labor economists have and that many of us understand to be important and that one term can be explained in many ways. It's a truth in accounting. It's a truth in many lines that there are frequently many terms that lead into something. But if you're going with a flat, one-dimensional term, you might not find it. Okay, business analyst is such a broad term that you'd find a connect to a connect point. 
but then there's probably some precision point underneath it that you wouldn't find as an exact connection. And there's not always time to, you know, elaborate and spell things out because when you have multi skills, you can't always go to a million different lines to spell it out. We need easier bridges to say, okay, this is generally here, and I've got proof and confidence that enough of it's there that we can cross the bridge. It should be the case, but it somehow continues to be um, kind of a stumbling block. And I, it, I think it's an education gap to HR and the vendor sourcing lines because they're trained on communications, on people skills, but not necessarily elicitation skills to understand the level of an engineer or a specialist, unless they have those skills and then they can say, yeah, I've got it, but then we've still got to package it down for someone with an eight-second attention span on the demand side that's not necessarily reading and, not, and is defeating the opportunity of the human value in the chain to see a talent and relate the talent because they're only letting it plug into the tech lines, which leaves you forever limited to the tech wall of perception of HRS, ATS, vendor portals, and weak eight-second communications, which are not always enough to communicate the value. That being said, when you cross the wall, DCARS and CPA lines are built specifically by us in deep lines to look at project management, business analysis, to look into the tech engineering lines, to think with ANSI and ISO, the standardization lines of tech, to think about the idle and data structure lines of some of the best in class, COBIT-5 as the security standards, but again, COBIT-5 security standards talk about the design and how things are put together in strong ways, um, and those add the TCP IP and all the structural lines are important lines, which also have reverse inflection, as we always say, risk can help you to understand growth and logistics, so if you're studying risk, you're also thinking about how is the system built, how can we help, how can we add improvements to the as-is and the future states as desired. Um, for adoption of software, for running parallel of software, for development of new architecture and hardware lines. All that stuff we're happy and skilled to help on. It's just a matter of where we sit in the team. As you get more and more technically skilled at programming, we wouldn't be your lead programmer, but we can certainly help on elements of it, and we can help on the strategy of what needs to happen for business purposes across the lines. We bring in our perspective financial, legal, and tech skills, and we think about the tech side, legal accounting, data science, engineering, and financial engineering points that go into the teamwork, into the ERP, EPM, HRIS, Salesforce, different lines of communications and CRM systems um, to help on the, the client supporting development. And underneath that, the major names of softwares and um, the different solutions, but all of them are still working to common needs. So while they may be somewhat different, um, underneath it, what's very important to remember is their engineering lines, and those engineering lines deal with software, hardware, and ICT lines of communication from point to point. It could be uh, the in-house lines of, of entry portals like your phone, um, your keyboard, your desktop monitor into a mainframe computer or up in the cloud, um, and then out to the internet, to the web, and to point to point communications from one business to clients to vendors to interested parties like regulators or stakeholders. and uh, what not on EPC lines of communications, which we study in engineering and think about what GRL STEM in terms of the goals. Enough said, that's another discussion. This is a much quicker run through than we had before, but we wanted to simply communicate as a lot of times the objectives for business analysts and project management is to see that the teamwork aligns to get data and financial information, analytics, comms, and programming to function in such a manner to get information about the team into the software, into the hardware, connecting through the ICT such that the project management, the business analyst, the tech engineer, and the financial functional business people and other engineers can see that we've got some entry level value of information here at the beginning and the start on the demand side and that someone's come over and helped to get from point to point and we've connected not only that but we found that we've connected the demand side here for the entity with the supply side skills like we have, our peers and other people within the group of neglected domestic STEM um, to come over and fill the gaps. So basically what we've got to do is work on this perception here, build a stronger line of communications, continue to refine it so it's much easier to understand. But this begins a line to again get back to the point of communication. We need to help HR and vendor sourcing. They're squeezed in the middle between entity demand and a waterfall of talent or a well pool of many different talents, and especially cross skills. I can't speak to how many other people can think in the manner to go to cross skills to needs. It may not be a common skill, but it's certainly a way where we can help on training and development so that if we say that we have a lack of domestic STEM talent pool, then allow us please to come in and help you get the domestic STEM talent you need because we can help in the onboarding lines of training development, get them to the right standards, to the right places, to read the right things, to understand what the context of the work is. And the value in that for us is the opportunity to help in training development or direct services 
as well as to know that we're helping people that are in need of good opportunities to stay engaged in the opportunities. Because otherwise, what happens is the opportunities are lost. If we commit to outsource everything that exists in our economy um, to the, the lowest point of bid, of course, we're going to lose everything. But if we commit a little bit more to kind of develop our own resiliency lines, to think more like engineers uh, and more in context of our how our value connects to, to systemic lines of GRL STEM, to growth risk and logistics with STEM, um, then we understand how we're each a part, whether you be an accountant in an organization, whether you understand that you're at the entry point, you're putting in information that's going to go eventually to analytics and reporting, um, or you're someone on a different side, you're on the tech side, you're on the logistics side, and that dimension of putting together solutions. You're working with software, hardware, ICT, you're developing solutions. Maybe you're a project manager or a business analyst helping to put the whole system together. Um, business analysts looking at the as-is state versus the future state and working on those stepwise improvements and data sets going in and technology features and functionality going in. But it, it's all part of the puzzle, solving things, putting things together with engineering. So we don't want to get caught up with HR and vendor portal lines talking about this one thing that could be in metaphor as relevant as you can hit a hammer with a nail. And if we can hit a hammer with a nail, then of course we can take a screw and use a screwdriver to basically put a screw to the frame both of those things strengthen the structure. It is engineering to, uh, to a framework, and at the end of the day, it's how the framework connects to the business needs. So let us keep this simple. We'll come back to this. We'll put together an arguably uh, better diagram to discuss what we're after. But at this point here, it gives us a start point from which to reference, from which to build, and from which to hopefully help in this continual problem of HR and vendor sourcing, working under supported line, meeting a wall of tech, uh, the tech of the tech, the tech wall of perception where they can't see over it, where they get stumped by HRIS, ATS, and vendor portal lines, such that they can't see a talent pool of which we're included in the talent pool, but there's also many other capable and intelligent people in the talent pool. And they're in three classes that we can help to get to where they need to go, primarily with the objective to help in domestic STEM and allied STEM uh, to get into the project lines to help on needs so that we can get more of a resilient reliant pool where we have both domestic. Uh, labor and the right cross-pollinization of global lines, but making sure that we're utilizing the talents, the skills, the people we have, and the knowledge that engineering is a fact set that works and fits together to do different things. It does it in repeatable patterns, and once you've done it in one system, other systems may be marginally different. You may have to learn the gaps in different things, but smart people that have worked with the different systems can see those commonalities, understand what should be happening, test what should be happening. If it's not happening, then you understand you have a gap and it's something you can either address and update or you communicate to your vendor uh, or you have to work around with. Sometimes people are doing a lot of solutions that are working around the system limitations, but um, for that reason, they also have native knowledge in terms of what the system can and cannot do and what the solutions around the system are. So part of your system's architecture and your hardware and software should be strong mapping and that's part of the IT cybersecurity frame to map your systems and understand what are the adequacies and the inadequacies of your accounting, your ERP, your EPM, your HRIS, your ATS, your vendor portals, and what other nine, what other lines exist there to help meet your needs. If you're working across the system the way we are, we're thinking about GRL STEM. It's a global analysis as well as the hands-on skills to get down to the needs to deliver the value and work from engineering frames. And hopefully this explanation had a little, you know, when we catch on a little bit more from teamwork, We'll get other people aligned to kind of get back to this point that the great generations used to know. If you could hit a hammer, hit a nail with a hammer, you could probably screw a screw with a screwdriver. And in metaphor, both of those bind frames, and frames are part of engineering, of building the framework to help and improve it. So Dean Carson from D. Carson CPA and GRL STEM. You can bet we'll be back to these lines to help build more. But for now, hopefully they've opened your eyes to think in new ways about how we communicate about this to help us work to get these pontoon bridges launched to help in domestic STEM and to keep the ball moving on the continual improvements because all around us the things are changing. We're more and more reliant on tech, but tech also has limitations and is highly reliant on the humans to read and understand where the connections lie, and that's a good thing. But we still need to build to make sure that the technology that we're relying on is not creating blind spots like this that are frustrating people with strong skills that can come to lines and help and uh, the opportunities to continue to build for domestic STEM. I'm Dean Carson. We care about this, and it's part of Strong Civics, as well as our needs and services, and an opportunity to help the team. I'm Dee Carson, Dee Carson CPA and GRL STEM on the web for your support.